Bonsoir et bienvenue à l'entretien avec euh, Monsieur Jürgen Prochno. Vous avez pu l'admirer tout à l'heure dans le film The Keep, qui a déjà 25 ans, c'est une sorte d'anniversaire. Et vous connaissez bien évidemment tous cet illustre personnage de son apparence dans Das Boot, un véritable film culte allemand. Et vous, vous l'avez certainement vu aussi dans d'autres films euh, très célèbres comme The English Patient ou euh, Heart of the Dead peut-être, et un tas d'autres. On va commencer avec l'entretien. Le, avec On va, comme d'habitude, procéder en anglais, à moins qu'il y ait quelqu'un qui ait besoin d'une traduction française ou néerlandaise. Ok, we gaan het interview in het, neder, in het Engels doen. Als iemand een vertaling wil van het Frans, of si quelqu'un veut une traduction ou veut poser une question en français, anglais, allemand, japonais, coréen, on va essayer de traduire. Donc, mais normalement, ça va être en anglais. Donc, évitez le coréen quand même. Donc, on va commencer. Uh, as someone who's had a really long career already, and that doesn't stop going on, and you have a very diverse career. You have started on theater, you have done TV, you have done cinema. So, uh, our first question I wanted to ask you is, what are the actual differences in working on the theater stage or for the big screen or for TV production? Uh, I think, does it work here, this one? Yeah. Can you hear me? I don't, uh, yeah? Uh, now, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I started in theater, and um, uh, I went to a drama school for three years uh, in Germany, and uh, then finally um, I got a job in a, in a local theater. I did many years repertory theater. And um, uh, in the meantime, uh, people wanted me for a movie, and uh, I did the first movie, and uh, I didn't like the work at all. It was so different. And um, because I was used as an, an actor trained for stage, uh, for stage work, and uh, the actors are uh, the, the center of, um, of the theater, uh, whereas in movies you have the whole uh, other parts, and uh, you have long periods of waiting time in between. And in a way, it's, uh, it was to me uh, a totally different profession to begin with. And, uh, which I had to learn and understand, and uh, I had to develop uh, new skills and, and uh, a different uh, attitude, and, but different skills uh, definitely to, to, be, uh, to begin with, to learn the profession of a uh, movie actor. <laughs> that first movie, was it a TV production or something for cinema? No, actually the first one was really a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, because I read on the IMDb, the Bible of all that's movie world, that you actually started your career in, the, in banking? Uh, that's not a career, but <laughs> I did uh, three years uh, before um, uh, I, I went to the drama school. Uh, I did an apprenticeship in a bank. That's true, yes. Uh, the information is right. <laughs> and secretly, I passed the exam at the drama school, and I was accepted. But I had still to finish that, that bank apprenticeship, which I did, and then um, I, I went to, to the drama school. Yeah, yeah. So it was the usual path of learning something real or more <laughs> ordinary before really going into the world of art. That's right, yes, yes. I, I led two different lives at that time. One was in the bank with a tie and a jacket always. In the evening, I worked jobs in the local theater, and uh, I saw many, many performances and, and, uh, and excellent actors, and that was the second life I led. So, yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, came Das Boot, which was an enormous box of a success. And I guess my, my question or the idea is, is in two parts. And the first part is was an enormous production because I saw this from Bavaria Studios. It was really an expensive movie for that time. But the really interesting thing about it is it was the first time, I guess, we saw a World War II movie where the Germans were actually not really the bad guys. So that was quite the original. Yeah, that was one of the reasons, I think, bec uh, why this movie became uh, a worldwide success and uh, left such an imprint uh, in the movie business and became a classic. And uh, I mean, uh, until now, after, t uh, what, 25 years now, after the release of the movie, people are still talking about it. And uh, when they see me and, and everybody has seen it, and it became a classic. And, uh, of course, I'm very proud to be part of this, but um, as I mentioned before, this is, uh, in a way, also unique 
Uh, I've done, until now, maybe I've been in 100 movies or something like that, and then all uh, the long life I've lived so far. And um, this was, I would say, the, maybe the only one where everything was right. From the, produ from the script, uh, from the producer, uh, from the director, uh, from uh, the actors, from the, uh, the music, from the editing, uh, and to find a project like that uh, is, uh, is maybe once in a lifetime. Uh, it's, um, and I was very fortunate, of course, uh, to, to portray this uh, uh, character in that movie. And it's based on, on a real story. It was, uh, um, as you probably know, uh, uh, the book was a big bestseller in Germany and uh, sold worldwide. And for me, when I read the book, uh, before we shot the movie, it was... Uh, uh, for the first time, uh, a book in Germany after the war, about the war, about World War II, uh, which was believable, which really uh, portrayed uh, the characters uh, as they were and, 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 and told the story uh, in a way uh, which was believable. And uh, you could feel that this guy who wrote the book, he experienced it all himself. He was on a submarine himself on, on these two voyages, and uh, he survived, and he was lucky, and he took the pictures, which you can compare to our movie, and the characters are identical. And uh, uh, that was really uh, a unique experience, I must say. Uh, now, linking to that question, uh, was this actually the first time you worked with Wolfgang Petersen? Because uh, you've worked with a lot of directors in your career. No, no, that was already the, um, um, the, first, uh, the fourth or fifth movie we did together. Um, I met him uh, through my agent. I was still in the theater at that time, and they said there's a young director, upcoming director, and he's sensational, and he wants you for a television thriller. And um, I met him, and I got this part. And I think uh, what I said before, through him, I think I learned about the movie business. And um, because uh, he made me understand what it was like and what the quality is of an actor and what counts and what is important in comparison to, let's say, theater acting. And uh, I understood and understood the power and uh, I had a wonderful time with him, I think. And since then, we worked a couple of times together again and um, we were always very successful. And then there came the offer for the boat, of course, and uh, that ca catapulted us to, to, into the United States and then the international business. Mm -hmm. And also, when Wolfgang Petersen went to America, he took his DP, Just Chakrano, with him, and I guess you worked together a couple of times with him too, didn't you? Yeah, I think uh, Just Chakrano at that time, he was also nominated for the Oscar for that. Um, he was sensational. I think the cinematography uh, was, at that time, uh, the best you can think of. Uh, the state of the art, even in Hollywood, a lot of people, uh, over years, because we did a lot of interviews, and so I know about this, they asked us, how did he do this? How did he do this shot? How did he achieve something like that? Because technically, it was impossible at that time. The uh, Steadicam was just invented, but, for example, the, uh, this shot where the crew is just uh, uh, going uh, through the whole boat and, uh, and to, from, from the front to the, to the back uh, for the balance of the boat, uh, that was so sensational. So they kept talking about this, and they, they couldn't understand how it was possible uh, from a little country like Germany that something like that was, was made, and uh, they were really, really excited about this. So, uh, as you said before, the style of the movie and also what it said about soldiers in general and about war in general, that made this, the, this movie a worldwide success, I think. Yes, and probably still one of the best war movies ever made, if we have to be honest. So. They vote a lot of, uh, and a lot of them then comes back with those votes and think that's one of the best ever made. Yeah. Mostly one of the most realistic war movies that have been made as well because there are long moments where nothing really happens, which is the reality of war, which in most movies isn't shown at all. Yeah, that's true. That is um, uh, something this guy experienced, really, this, this uh, waiting, waiting, waiting for, for the opportunity to, to do what you're supposed to do with this. Uh, a weapon uh, that was not a boat in reality it was more a weapon because it was constructed for 
I think, uh, 24 people, and in wartime they went with 48 people on a submarine like that. So uh, three guys were sharing a bunk to sleep, and uh, every eight hours they had to, 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 to give the bunk to the next one then. And that was the living conditions were just, uh, everybody's seen the, uh, the movie knows this, was unbearable. It was, uh, I mean, for up almost three months they were living or supposed to live on, on, in a place like that. Uh, unbelievable. Yeah. And then, of course, after this boat, you walked into Dune, <laughs> Dune, which is probably a Q&A that could last four hours if you would. But if you have maybe an anecdote about the movie that nobody knows because it was such a big, big Actually, production. Um, it was not Dune. The, um, uh, the first big Hollywood movie I made after the boat was The Keep. It was Michael Mann and um, the movie I just saw again tonight. Uh, after 23 years, and um, uh, a great movie, I think. Um, uh, very, very special look, and uh, that was uh, the first big Hollywood movie I made. I was so impressed, I, I cannot believe it. I mean, the boat we were shooting for one year, and it was a very, very tough shooting. But here, the, uh, uh, on the keep, um, something like building a Romanian village into a slate pit in Wales. Uh, into a hole, everything was constructed in there, every house, every, uh, every church, whatever it was built in there. The animals had to be brought down with elevators and the cars and everything. The, the scale and the size of a movie like that I had never experienced before, I must say. It was incredible, incredible, and beautifully designed. Um, John Box, the designer. Yeah, I'm also a big admirer of the keep, but I've read some, I don't know if this is true, but some rumors that Michael Mann is actually doesn't want the movie to be released on DVD. Do you know anything about that? Uh, I don't know anything about that, but uh, what I know is that he was uh, thinking because uh, uh, the original script was uh, longer. There was a fifth act which is not shown in the movie, which was, uh, was, which was eliminated. And, um, I don't know exactly why, but uh, maybe because of the length of the movie, or etc. And maybe that's the reason why, uh, because he still plans maybe to re-edit, or that was years back at least what, what my information was about this, that he wanted to re-edit the movie and, 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 uh, to, and bring back to the original version probably. That's so probably the, why, the reason. Yeah. So he's basically waiting for the chance to do a director's cut for the DVD version. I don't know whether he's still thinking about it, but um, I can call him and ask him. <laughs> After all that time, it would be quite impressive. Uh, moving on to the next question, just linked to that. You've worked with Wolfgang Petersen, you've worked with David Lynch, you've worked with Michael Mann, you've also worked with Uwe Boll, the internet's favorite. Um, so is there, are there really noticeable interesting differences in working with yes. such a lot of different <laughs> directors. Yes, there are big differences, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it depends already on, uh, uh, on the script, of course, and um, on the budget, uh, but not necessar that doesn't tell you necessarily about the quality of the movie, uh, for sure, and the quality of the director and, uh, and all that. that uh, it's not necessarily the money, but um, uh, for, let's say, special effect movies, uh, if you want to achieve uh, sh shots like this, which are told in a, in a, uh, in a story and are difficult to achieve, and, and, and uh, they cost a lot of money, and if you don't have the money to develop this, of course, in the end, the movie looks shitty. Peut-être il y a déjà des questions dans le public so then moving on to already uh, kind of dropped the ball on, on Dune but you work with David Lynch again on the Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me movie so how did you get involved with that because that was a strange <laughs> project in itself wasn't it um, yeah, I, I, I loved David Lynch. It was uh, every day I enjoyed working with him in, in Mexico when we did this movie. So that was a, a, a great experience, great director, full of fantasy. And, and, and uh, as I said, every day was, was special. So it happened that I, I was shooting something else in, 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 uh, in, in Los Angeles, and it was my, my wife's uh, birthday. And uh, they became very close where we were shooting, his wife and, and my wife. And um, 
So uh, we invited David, and uh, he came to, to, to the birthday party at the Chateau Maman, the very famous. And um, um, he told me then, I was, I was asking him, what, what are you doing? And he was saying, yes, uh, uh, he, uh, he's, he's doing this uh, uh, Twin Peaks fire walk with me, and um, I have a part for you in this. I said, okay, uh, no, no problem. He said, it's only a day. Said, yeah, of course, for you, and I'm, I'm, I'm up for this, and no problem, you know. And uh, then the, the next day I got the script and um, I found out all of a sudden that uh, I had uh, a couple of lines there, quite a few, and, but I had to speak backwards. <laughs> so this little day with David Lynch cost me maybe four weeks of rehearsal <laughs> and sleepless nights. <laughs> And then finally, I, I, I came to the to the set, and I had to speak English backwards. It was a nightmare, I can tell you. <laughs> and then to 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 another pretty big movie that that happened in your career. There was the, the Beverly Hills Cop too, the Eddie Murphy movie. That must have been some production because expectations were so high on that movie. And then Tony Scott came on as director, so that must have been quite an experience. Yeah, that was something for me uh, I'll never forget as well, because um, uh, um, I had this character in there, and uh, I thought with my character, I talked to Tony Scott about it, I thought we have to, to establish him more, we have to, to uh, give him more uh, shots in the movie and more room uh, about this character. And, uh, but I didn't understand Hollywood at that time, you know. I ended up with less than it was written <laughs> and, uh, uh, because it was all about Eddie Murphy, the movie, and, 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 and the way it was directed. And uh, uh, they didn't care so much about developing uh, uh, a character which I thought was necessary from, from my experience. And, um, so that was my experience with that. <laughs> uh, in that movie you play a villain. Would you say that at some point in your career, because there's a lot of roles where you always go back to that kind of theme, that you have been typecast as a villain? Um, I try to uh, avoid that a lot in, 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 uh, uh, in Hollywood, uh, not to be typecasted. So, for example, in Dune, I played the good guy, Gioglito, and uh, a couple of other characters as well, uh, and not always being the bad guy. But I have nothing against, ba nothing against bad guys. I think very often they are the better characters, I think, and... Uh, um, they are better written very often and for an actor more interesting to portray than, uh, than the one-dimensional hero very often. So um, uh, I don't mind. Uh, if it's a good, it depends on the script and on the character, of course. And uh, um, of course, on, on the other hand, me as a foreigner in the United States, uh, uh, I'm more up first of all, for the bad guy, and the American it's himself plays the good guy, of course, you know. <laughs> I actually phrased my question wrongly. What I was going to ask is, did you choose his roles because playing, playing bad guys is more interesting? Well, I would say I, uh, I take the part or I pick the parts uh, because uh, uh, the story interested me, and in the story, the character interested me. And uh, that was for, for many, many years the case, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then, of course, one of, one of your most beautiful roles you've played was in the English Patient, where you play a bad guy, but that was a really nuanced bad guy from the late Mengele now, unfortunately, we have lost him. Yeah, I think it's um, um, uh, a tragedy, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very sad about this when I read, because he was still so young, and uh, I still hope to work with him again, because uh, he was really a wonderful person and great director, and uh, so skilled, and um, he convinced me to play this, this part, because uh, this character is not part of the book. Um, I read the book before on Dacia, and I loved the book, The English Patient. I thought it's a beautiful book, but a beautiful language. But it's not possible, really, to to transfer this into a movie, because the language is uh, is so important. And uh, then I read his script. He, uh, he wrote the script himself, Mengele, and it was all there. It was Everything was there, and in addition to that, of course, he was able to, to find the cast and so And I wanted to play the, the thief, Caravaggio. Um, the, he said, uh, unfortunately, I have to cast an American with the movie because of uh, financial uh, difficulties, because uh, uh, we all worked for, for almost for scale on that movie, for, for nothing, 
more or less, and um, it became a huge success and won these nine Oscars, and um, I'm proud of, of, of it. I must say that I'm part of this. Um, that was my experience with the English patient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Alle vragen in het publiek? Questions in het publiek? Vous pouvez les poser en tous les langues, hein? vous savez, vous pouvez essayer. And maybe another question from me then. So uh, a lot of European directors, actors have gone to America, made big American movies, not only Wolfgang Peterson, we have Rutger Hauer as an actor, you have Roland Emmerich. But now lately we see a lot of these people coming back to Europe and there are Paul of Reuven's doing bank movies in, in Europe and is that because they want to gain a little bit more control about their projects that Hollywood isn't letting them do this more creative possibilities? Um, maybe. I'm, I'm not so sure about this, but uh, I know for, for, for Peterson, for example, uh, that um, he's not going back, definitely, and then Emmerich also, I think. Um, but uh, I cannot speak for, for, for others. Uh, but m- maybe if, if you're not able to, to really to do what you want with, with your story and you cannot, cannot tell it the way you, you, you think it should be told, uh, people get frustrated and, uh, and they, maybe they come back and uh, find their projects over here and, and, and uh, better stories and, and, and better way to tell the story. Uh, another question is: um, You played in uh, you played Arnold Schwarzenegger in *See Arnold Run*. Uh, what was it? What kind of experience was it to play a fellow actor? Um, I mean, in a way, it's always difficult if you think this person is alive and sees your performance, and <laughs> uh, it is a little bit embarrassing, I must say. But uh, it was a very good script, a very funny. And uh, uh, I think a, a, a great opportunity, I think, uh, portraying somebody like, uh, I'll be back. <laughs> it was uh, uh, a great opportunity, I think. And uh, for me, it was uh, possible because I could do um, the, the older Arnold Schwarzenegger. I could play the older Arnold Schwarzenegger. The younger Arnold Schwarzenegger was... Uh, played by a real bodybuilder. The movie went back and forth between the 70s and, and nowadays. And my part started as Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, as uh, when he decided to become governor of, of, Cali- of Cali- California. So uh, <laughs> that, was, uh, uh, that was a possibility then. And um, otherwise I couldn't have done it, of course. I mean, uh, I don't have that body and... Uh, uh, it's not possible, not believable. Vragen? Mm-hmm. Iemand? Anyone? Oh, okay then. Maybe we'll go to your actual projects, the things you're working on now, uh, movies you're working on right now. Yeah, I did uh, last year, I did two movies. Uh, one of them is not finished yet. It's called The Eye. I, I met the directors here. They have shot another movie which opened yet, The Eye. <laughs> uh, that was shot in, 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 in Prague. Um, uh, Milos Kohut directed this movie or is still directing it. It's not finished yet. It's based on an old Hitchcock script which uh, was at Universal for, for many years and was never made into a movie. And they bought the rights, and uh, I think it's pretty interesting. And, and maybe you see it next year over here. Uh, it would be right for the festival, actually. I think uh, interesting. And the other one I did in in, in Spain, uh, which will open uh, this year, uh, end of the year, hopefully in Venice at the film festival. And that was called the Escorial Conspiracy. And uh, right now I'm I'm, I'm reading scripts, and um, there's one project I, I might do. Um, in, in the fall now, uh, it's, it's uh, called the absinthe drinkers, uh, people drinking absinthe, uh, end of the 19th century, a very interesting story as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question, taking a little bit further maybe, is uh, as a German, seeing that in a lot of American movies, German history, especially about the World War, is simplified and cliched. So what do you think about that, actually? When, uh, when I came to, to the United States, uh, it was still uh, 
more than it is nowadays, I think. It, my feeling is, I mean, there were all these, there were series, television series, and there were commercials, and uh, where they used the, the ugly German or the, the SS officer uh, uh, to make fun about something. And, and, and uh, in a way, I don't feel this uh, openly, uh, not anymore. Not, not, it's not that strong there uh, anymore, but um, uh, maybe it's still there, yeah. But not maybe in, in percentage, maybe not that. No, it's less, I would say. And compared to the f when you first went to Hollywood for the keep, whether was it, it was it still a lot stronger or? For me, it was never a problem. People accepted me immediately when I got over there, and they uh, they gave me the feeling that they liked me very, very much uh, right to begin with, and they. Uh, um, Yeah, they said my, my work is, uh, is good and they, 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 they liked what I did and, uh, that's, uh, and, and therefore only because uh, I think I, I, that was the, the, the criteria for, for, for my career over there. Uh, uh, proving that you were able to, to perform and, and, and uh, portray characters in movies. Ok, last seconds, dernière chance. Ah. Il y a quelqu'un, euh, le micro... Ah, le micro... Le micro baladeur. Voilà. Le micro baladeur, oui. Yes, hi. Um, welcome here. Um, you were talking about oh. that sport having probably such a success because it was innovative and I heard you talking about people coming back to Europe, which got me wondering how innovative would you say German or European cinema is these days in your view? Um, uh, first of all, um, I'm, I'm part of the German Film uh, Academy, and uh, so I see the German movies uh, from every year. They send me 50 uh, uh, DVDs uh, every year, and I, I, because I have to vote about uh, everything, which is great because I can see what's, what's being done over there and what's being shot, and, uh, and, and uh, so I can judge and, 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 and say uh, what the standard is in a way, and, and, and you see the productions every year. And European movies, unfortunately, in general, uh, in, in the United States, uh, very, very few. I mean, to release a movie now in the States, as you know, uh, it's, it's a big business. When I came over there, I think it's about art, but it's not about art. It's about business. It's about making money. And that's what I had to understand because uh, uh, those movies, they cost a lot of money and people who invest in those movies, they want to make money again. And you, every week, uh, Monday, you see the charts and you see how much, how much money a movie made. For example, uh, the last one, uh, Ronald Emery, 10,000 uh, BC. Uh, first week or first weekend, uh, 35 million dollars or something like that with, uh, in, uh, in theaters, in, in 3,000 theaters. And uh, then the next mo weekend or the next week, another big movie is opening, and uh, that is all uh, where uh, the theaters are booked in advance from the big companies, from the major companies. And it's very difficult and it costs a lot of money to promote a small movie and to be successful with a the movie. Therefore, it's getting, I think, more and more difficult for European movies uh, uh, to, to be seen in the Internet. Every now and then you have, but only little theaters, uh, uh, movies over there. And, and, and uh, um, very good movies, though. And uh, it's a shame that uh, they don't have a chance really to be seen by a wider audience. And when you finally made that realize, when you finally realized that fact, wasn't it disappointing? And are you, as someone who comes from the real theater stage, not kind of rooting for the underdog films? You can't make it because they don't have the money for that kind of promotion. Of course, it's very disappointing, and people are fighting hard every uh, always, and uh, and and uh, to, to and living in their dream to to get their project done and to make uh, their movie and. Uh, To, to find the, the, the finances for the movie, but uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very, very, very disappointing. And, uh, but in my profession, the same thing. I mean, there are hundreds of tens of thousands of actors in, uh, in, in Los Angeles, for example, uh, uh, 
living the big uh, dream that they one day they, they, they find the big break breakthrough with a part in, in a movie and, and then make a career and they're living with it. But uh, I think uh, in our union, in Actors Guild, we have 120,000 actors um, in the U.S. And uh, I would say maybe, I don't know, maybe even 10% are working, if maybe even less, I don't know. Uh, yes, Mr. Prognov, I know it's been a long day for you, so I'm going to release you now with one final question, which is always my question I ask every director, every ask, actor that's here. That's a dream project. Uh, if you had, like, a dream contract, which director, which book, which character, what would be your dream role to do? Um, I mean, finding a, a good script, for example, like uh, The Boat, again, uh, with a character, mustn't be a, a soldier or anything, but um, a strong character in a, in a movie like that, and, uh, uh, of course, a very good director, and then all the other parts as well, uh, pr from the producer, as I said before, that would be my, uh, my wish to do something like that again, to find something that everybody's hoping there, and everybody is, is going for it, and, 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 and believing, and... and Every, every new part you play, you think maybe oh, that's a good opportunity, but uh, uh, a lot of uh, projects in Ori to begin with, uh, uh, it won't be that, uh, that standard. Well, Sir Pragnav, in the meantime, we thank you very much for the beautiful movie experiences you gave us so far. I hope there are many more in the future. I thank you many for coming more. to the festival. So give a big round of applause to Mr. Jürgen Pragnav. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Donc, il y a les dédicaces, euh, antekeningen, alles dat jullie willen, kunnen jullie nu komen aanschuiven. Hè?